Good morning all. Today we are going to discuss about double case induction motor. So before going to this, let us see the basics that are required for this. So we have seen in the induction motor, the torque is given by 180 by 2 pi ns into S e2 square into R2 by R2 square plus Sx2 square. So at the time of starting, we know the slip is equal to 1. Generally, the value of the reactance will be greater than resistance for the case of induction motor because of the leakage reactance. So we can tell the starting torque will be equal to 180 by 2 pi ns into e2 square into r2 divided by as x2 is greater than r2 i can neglect it so this becomes x2 square or from this i can tell my starting torque is proportional to the value of the rotor resistance now the slip corresponding to maximum torque will depend on the ratio of r2 by x2 so more the value of the resistance the slip corresponding to maximum torque will increase and lesser the value the slip corresponding to maximum torque will decrease so now if we calculate the maximum torque the maximum torque is inversely proportional to the reactance so let us try to make the summary from this what is my requirement so, if my value of the resistance is less, if the value of the resistance is less, the advantage is at the time of starting there is a disadvantage but under running conditions, we know the value of I2 square into R2 is less. That means the rotor copper losses are less. When the rotor copper losses are less, the efficiency will improve. So, this is the major advantage of this. The disadvantage of keeping the lower value of the resistance is at the time of starting, so TST, see TST is proportional to the value of R2, as R2 is less, the starting torque is decreased. So that is a disadvantage. That means we can tell by keeping the lesser value of the resistance, so it will have good running characteristics. It will have very good running characteristics, but poor starting characteristics. So let us see what will happen if the resistance is increased. Instead of decreasing this, let us assume we have increased the resistance. So if you are increasing the resistance, the disadvantage is the value of I2 square into R2 under running condition increases. So automatically the efficiency will fall down. This is the first one. But the starting characteristics TST which is proportional to R2 as R2 is increased, so automatically the TST increases. This is the first advantage. Second advantage, if the value of resistance is more, the value of the current taken by the rotor under starting conditions, that means the value of IST will be less. That is the second advantage. The machine will not be overloaded or overheated. So, these are the benefits of this. So, we can tell that if you are increasing the resistance, the advantage is it will have good start characteristics and poor running characteristics so if we can combine the features of these two we can get a better performance that means i want very good starting characteristics and very good running characteristics so in order to provide the value of high starting torque with less value of the starting current we go for the double cage induction motor in the case of double cage induction motor the starting torque will vary from 2 to 2.5 times of the value of the full load torque whereas the starting current is only 4 to 6 times the value of the full load current because of large value of the resistance so how this is constructed so the construction of double cage induction motor will be like this if you take your rotor so here the bar will be inserted this is the bar so again there will be notch so inside the notch there will be one more bar so this is the way the construction happens this is the outer side of this rotor so similar way all the bars will be there so this is called as the starting cage because it is used during the starting so generally this is made up of manganese brass this is made up of manganese brass and generally the area is very less now coming to the inner side one so this inner side one is called as running cage generally this running cage is made up of red copper and it is also made in such a way that area is more so that the resistance is less that means we can tell the outer cage will have the more resistance and inner cage will have less resistance and along with that there is one more thing this air gap is maintained in between so this is called as constriction that means there will be an air gap which is connecting the two cages so in between so, okay this is called as air construction so let us see the details of each one so now whenever the stator mmf is coming that means the stator mmf is coming like the stator north pole because rotating magnetic field is produced by the stator that flux is coming so that flux will link with this conductor also the inside conductor also because of this the emf is induced in the conductor they will start producing a flux or the leakage flux 
Now the leakage flux produced by this one NR1, you can see the leakage flux pattern will be like this. Whichever leakage flux is produced, it will come like this. And here because of air construction, very less leakage flux will come here. Again, leakage flux will be more here through this and it is like this. So it will pass on like this. So you can observe here the inside conductors, these conductors inside ones are linking with more value of the flux as compared to the outer one. As more leakage flux is linking the inner side, so automatically the EMF that is induced will be more as you go into deep, as you go inside. So as the EMF is more, that means it will oppose the cause. So how to oppose the cause that opposing that one, we can represent in the form of the leakage reactance. The leakage reactance will increase as we go into deep of the rotor. So this is what the conclusion we have made. So we can tell that this running cage winding will have more value of reactance as compared to the starting cage rotor. That means starting cage rotor will have more resistance, less reactance and running cage winding will have more reactance and less resistance. This is what happens under normal operating conditions. Now, why this air construction is used? The purpose of this air construction is whatever the flux that is coming from the stator, because there is a chance that flux can only link with this one, it will go and close like this, it will go to the next field. So, because of this air construction, the resistance will be offered to this or the reluctance is offered to this. Because of the reluctance, whatever the main MMF is coming. So, let me draw it here. So, whatever flux comes from the stator, so this cannot only link with this one and go back. So, some flux will come and go like this and the flux will not go from intermediate, the flux will go through the second winding also. That means whatever the stator flux is produced, that will link with both the bar windings or both the windings so that EMF will be induced in both. Otherwise, there is a chance that flux can only pass through the upper winding and does not link with the lower winding. So, whatever purpose is there, that may go. So, there this air construction will play the role because the reluctance of the air is more when compared to reluctance of the core or the materials that are kept. That means the parts. Getting it, this is the first reason. And second reason, whatever leakage flux is produced, that leakage flux I want, it should only link with the conductors. So, this even the leakage flux that is closing, this cannot prefer to close here. So, it will prefer to pass through this conductor only. That means whatever is produced, the leakage flux linkages will be more for a given value of the current that is passing through the bars or given value of the EMF induced in the bars. This is the main reason for this. Let us see how this machine will operate. How this machine will operate. So, the machine will operate like this at the time of starting. So, the value of F rotor is equal to F stator is equal to 50 H. This is what we observe. So, we know that the reactance of the running winding because of frequency is 50 H because X is equal to 2 pi F L because frequency is more because X is equal to 2 pi F L because frequency is more for a given value of inductance which is a property of the material the reactance will be more getting it because the frequency is more. The rux, X running winding will be far far greater than the reactance of the starting winding. So, the as the X is dominating at the time of starting we have just seen for any type of induction motor. So, automatically the impedance of the running winding is far far greater than the impedance of the starting winding. As the impedance is more, so majority of the current will pass through the starting winding only. That means the current that is passing through running winding is far far greater than the current passing through starting winding. That means at the time of starting, the starting winding will act in place. So, as the starting winding is carrying most of the current, so automatically the as the TST is proportional to resistance. So, now this resistance becomes RST. So, automatically the starting torque is improved. Even though the torque is produced by the second winding also, but majority of the torque will be produced by the main winding or the starting winding. So, as a result of this, the high starting torque is obtained. This advantage. Now, the second one under running conditions. So, under running conditions, the frequency of rotor will be slip times of the stator frequency, which will be approximately equal to 2 to 3 H. That means frequency is very less. As the frequency is very less, the reactance of your running winding and the reactance of your starting winding. So, these two depends on the frequency. As the frequency is very less, the reactance effect will be very less. So, this also decreases drastically. This also decreases drastically because frequency is changed. So, they will be nearly equal to same. That means, the difference will be very less compared to the resistance. So, now the resistance plays a major role. The resistance of, we know the running winding 
running winding is far far greater than the resistance of starting winding as the resistance of running winding is less so automatically with the impedance of the running winding is far far less than the impedance of starting winding so majority of the current under running conditions the will pass through only the running winding as compared to that of starting winding so current is mainly confined to the running winding so majority of the torque is produced by the running winding majority of the torque is produced by the running winding so we know that under running and operating conditions i want to decrease my copper losses as the current is mainly confined to the running winding the copper losses will be less and it will gives rise to better value of running characteristics that is the second one now corresponding to slip corresponding to maximum torque so slip corresponding to maximum torque is the ratio of r2 by x2 under running conditions the running winding is dominating as the resistance is less so slip corresponding to maximum torque also will be less so the torque the maximum value of the torques for comes for lesser value of the slip or at a higher rated speeds so automatically the running performance of your machine will improve the running performance of your machine will improve getting it so now this can be visualized in a different way this i can take as an induction motor containing two windings that means i can take the equivalent circuit of this in this way so this is my magnetizing component and core loss component this is x not this is r not so let us take it as im this is equal to ie so voltage is applied here this is my supply voltage so this will have the stator resistance and leakage reactance this is stator resistance this is a leakage reactance now the rotor can be assumed as having two windings so one is a normal winding or the outer winding or the starting winding this is x not by k square because the rotor reactance refer to primary side let us assume this is i not this is r not by k square into s this is for the outer winding or starting winding so similarly for running winding so let us assume the running winding i am taking as inner winding or ii or you can take it as ir whatever you take it so this will be ri divided by k square into s this is for the running winding similarly the reactance of the running winding let us take it as xi divided by k square this is the equivalent circuit so the equivalent circuit will carry two things the current is having two components one component is related to the outer one another component is related to inner one so we can tell that this produces two different type of torques one torque because of the outer winding another torque because of the inner winding depending on their characteristics the torque will vary and your resultant torque will be the sum of the torque produced by these two windings getting it so let us see how it comes so if you draw this this is my value of ns so this is torque so the starting winding the characteristics will be like this this is for outer cage or the starting winding now coming to the inner cage inner cage characteristics will be like this this is u2 inner cage so the resultant value will be sum of these two so sum of these two torques will give to your resultant torque so your resultant torque will vary something like this this is your resultant torque so you can tell that the resultant torque is improved but this is having some disadvantages also this is having the disadvantages also the disadvantage is the maximum torque that can be obtained using this double case induction motor will be less than the maximum torque that can obtained with normal squirrel case induction motor because the maximum torque depends on the value of the x2 in this case the reactance is more because two windings are there both are having the reactance so reactance is more so automatically it produces lesser value of the torque that is the first reason and the second reason is you can see the characteristics this winding is producing the maximum torque at different value of the slip this winding is producing at different values of the slip whenever you are adding them both are not producing the maximum torque at same instant of the speed this is the second reason why the maximum torque is less than that of the maximum torque obtained by induction motor you can analyze in this way also because both are getting the maximum torque at different speeds now coming to the power factor the full load power factor for the case of double cage motor will be less than the full load power factor let us take it as full load for the case of normal induction motor the reason is the value of the x is more in the case of double cage motor that is the reason because power factor is equal to r by z if x is more for a given resistance automatically the power factor will decrease and the next disadvantage is the losses are more in the case of double cage rotor because in the case of double cage motor two resistances are there 
so because of this the losses will be more so automatically the efficiency will be less than normal squirrel cage induction motor so i am just making the summary of this so the advantage of double cage induction motor is it produces very huge value of the starting torque with lesser value of the starting current it has good running characteristics also but only limitation of this is it is having a little bit lesser efficiency as compared to that of squirrel cage induction motor and power factor also little bit of less as compared to squirrel cage induction motor so wherever you want high starting torque wherever you want high starting torque and you want a good running characteristics that means similar to that of squirrel cage induction motor and high starting torque similar to that of wound rotor induction motor we can go for double cage induction motor but you have to remember here the characteristics of double cage induction motor are inferior the running characteristics are inferior to that of wound rotor type of induction motor under starting conditions or we can tell that the performance of double case induction motor are inferior to that of wound rotor induction motor under starting conditions wherever you want extreme starting torque and flexible control we go for wound rotor induction motor otherwise we can go for double case induction motor or deep cage rotor induction motor that means we can tell the torque produced by double cage induction motor is better than the squirrel cage induction motor and deep bar rotor induction motor but inferior than wound rotor induction motor at the time of starting I hope this topic is completely clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.